day 537 <laughs> of the era of COVID-19. Wow. Shout out to COVID right in the first minute. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to Stay at Homekins. This is a quarantine podcast. We are a goddamn married couple. A goddamn married couple. <laughs> My name is Paul F. Tompkins. I'm Janie Haddad Tompkins. I'm a comedian. I'm an actress. Together we make magic. <laughs> and we're that not. No one can see. <laughs> we won't be able to work for two years. <laughs> That's right. We're watching our industry, mm. Marty McFly, into non existence <laughs> right before our very eyes. It's awesome. <laughs> Luckily, during this trouble time, mm. we had a major appliance break on us. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, yeah. Yeah. That's happening. We fixed. We're, it's all going to work out. It's going to be fine. We, we threw, took care of it. We threw money at the problem that we have to pay back later. <laughs> yeah. You know, later when all the jobs <laughs> return. <laughs> we just threw money at the problem. And, like, honestly, it was. Such an emotional roller coaster. It really was. But we ultimately realized that this washer and dryer that we bought when we moved here to the to our home. Yeah. We had I was so had been serviced many times. But I was like so proud that I scored us such a deal on them. They were like the floor model. Right. <laughs> Which I think means that people at Best Buy were actually washing their clothes. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing with it. I think when the, when so the doors closed, <laughs> <laughs> everyone that worked at Best Buy brought their laundry in. Right. To save wear and tear on their own machines. Exactly. But so ultimately, it's like if you've ever had that experience of you bought a thing. That, that you spent never a, worked right. Spent a lot of money on. That you spent a lot of fucking money I on. I mean, I did score the deal. It's just a high ticket item. Here's the thing. You get what you pay for. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's your next podcast. What? How? Because <laughs> that, that catchphrase is everything. So it, everything else takes care of itself. So you, you, I just it, start out. I every, got it. It's a, you have guests. Yeah. And they have stories of throwing good money after bad. Oh, that's no one wants to. That's going to be it's a relatable. Bummer. It's relatable. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things are relatable that aren't <laughs> fun to listen to. <laughs> However, you cannot deny that my delivery of you get what you pay for. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> you get oh, what you pay for. <laughs> that would hook people in every single time. That's so good. <laughs> I think it's good. I think it could be a TV show. How? <laughs> I'm already saying it can't be a podcast. But you're wrong. <laughs> There's a TV show. Simple as that. Of people. <laughs> There's a TV show of people watching TV called The People's Couch, which Paul was like into for a long time. I very much enjoy The People's Couch, yes. Which is based on a... Br anyway, I'm just saying... Yeah, based if, on a British show called Gogglebox, I believe. I'm just saying if that can be a show, you get... What you pay for? You get what you pay for <laughs> with Paul F. Tompkins. Yeah, that should be it. Wait, oh my <laughs> god, it's so good. You go to people's homes after. Then this is post vaccine pitch. Mm -hmm. You go to people's homes. <laughs> oh, all right, we bought these things at Best Buy. They have cost us more money. <laughs> and by the way... And more heartache. I've done the math. I, I, I put how much we bought them for, how much we spent on repairs over the years, mm -hmm. and then I divide it by how many months. It was like $30 a month. And now it's gone. Oof. We just have to think of it like we rented them. You just think like we yes, rented exactly. them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's <laughs> the thing. That wasn't even the lowest point of it wasn't? our quarantine. Oh, it wasn't? Lowest point was... <laughs> I've already blocked everything out until now. <laughs> well, this was very recent. Today... Oh, that one. We went mm. and got food at McDonald's. We did. <laughs> First of all, that... Okay. It was a happy thing because we went... We ran an errand that's going to get us out the house. We ran a good errand. We went here... We bought bikes when we moved to this neighborhood, which is very... um. It's very flat. Bel Air. It's easy to get. 
when we moved to Bel Air, once the gate closed, <laughs> we looked around and we're like, this place is great. It looks hilly, but behind the gate, <laughs> yeah. it's flat. They make it appear, it's like an optical it's a illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To keep people out. <laughs> That's right. That's because exactly poor right. people are like, oh, I want to steal from those rich people. Yeah. But I don't want to <laughs> drag a, a giant a flat screen TV up the hill. <laughs> but then they close the gate and it's, it's like ple- flat. It's like Pleasantville. Yeah. Or, uh, wait, wait, not Pleasantville. What's the Pleasantville, one? Pleasantville. About the flat place? The fake, the fake thing where the light falls on Jim Carrey's head. Oh, Truman Show. Truman Show. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, where were we? Oh, so anyway, we, so we went. So we got these bikes, and then we never use. <laughs> I use mine for a while. Well, You've never been a you're big like bike, a bike rider. Person. You're a vacation bike person. You goddamn right I am. She loves a bike on vacation. You goddamn right I am. But I like to. I really like. Well, you I like used a, to bike around L.A. I used to bike before I got my driver's how license. You commuted. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I had. I didn't. I've never had like a fancy bike. I had cruiser bikes always. And I used because you got really strong calves. It's that's people very don't true. Know about if you. people don't know, and I I don't talk about it. It's a family trait, but I have that's rock solid. I have very strong. <laughs> I have very strong and very shapely calves. Now I know <laughs> our, our friend John Hodgman. <laughs> he talks about his calves a lot. He does. Yes, he does. What? Well, we talk about other things, and I mean, I'm sure his calves are fine. I've never looked personally. <laughs> I I haven't either. I don't take those liberties with my friends. Yeah, you know, hey, you got a, you got steak at home. You don't go out for hamburger. You know what I'm saying? How mad? <laughs> How mad are you that when you didn't have a license and you biked everywhere, there was a stigma to it? versus by the time you got the license Mm -hmm. and started driving instead of biking everywhere, Mm -hmm. there became a stigma to that. To driving? You feel like environmentally it's 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 achieved the point of stigma? I would say like okay, pre driver's license, when people would be like, What? You don't drive? Yes. In Los Angeles? Yeah. God. Yeah. And you're like, I take a bike or I take a cab or I get rides. And now if you were like, I don't want a car, man. I bike everywhere. They'd be like, whoa, that's like so cool. Right. That's like so like conscientious. Right. right, right. But it like it was literally honestly, like the flip of the switch. Absolutely. Happened. Yes. It doesn't bother me at all because I love <laughs> driving so much. And I know that. And here's the thing. I know that it is environmentally bad. No, my car is electric, but whatever. Your car is all electric, <laughs> and I'd like to—I like my car a lot, and I hope—I hope that I can get an electric version of my car. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I do feel like not having had a car, you for had a smaller, decades, a smaller footprint. I had a much smaller footprint. Um, but anyway, so we—so I used to ride my cruiser bike all over town. Loved it. The two, I. I Years ago, when I first started working in L.A., when I first started making money, I got myself a bike um, that was a reproduction of a classic Schwinn bike. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. It was a blue bike. Schwinn, no speeds, just a cruiser, but it looked like, you know, a 1950s. Retro. Yeah, it was like really a retro. retro. It was beautiful. It was vintage, most vintage. S- extremely comfortable. But not vintage. It was new to look. It was not vintage. vintage, yeah. But when I rode that bike around, yeah. people loved seeing me <laughs> like strangers. They Because I would like, I would bike to work and so I'd wear a coat and tie. Uh-huh. And people fucking love seeing me on that bike. Like they. What happened sh- to the bike? Well, it was very heavy. Oh, that's right. You told me that. But so like- when I moved, I moved to an apartment where I lived on the fourth floor. I remember. And I could not on Cherokee. I what I couldn't. I wasn't a like they wouldn't let us lock our bikes up on the premises outside, and so I had to carry it up to my which is apartment. probably a good idea in Hollywood anyway that you didn't leave it outside. Yeah, but there's a 
there was a, a, a place on the property behind a gate that I could have locked mm. it up that they would not let us do. So <laughs> I I sold that bike or I gave I think I gave it away. I think I gave it to someone. Like someone you know. Did you give it to that neighbor Matthew? Do you I can't remember the remember. neighbor Matthew? Yeah, I remember Matthew. I can't remember. I if think I, I'm still Facebook friends with I, that I guy. Think I, I think I sold it to somebody. Oh, okay. I think I sold it to somebody, and I got a smaller, lighter cruiser bike. And then when we moved here to Bel that Air, bi- that to Bel Air, that that cruiser bike I'd had for a long time, and um, when we moved here, because it's so much flatter than my old apartment. I said, you know what? I'm going to get myself one of those reproductions again. And so I got another one. They did not have that color, <laughs> but they had, but I got one and I absolutely love it. So it's nice. It's a really nice bike. And then Paul talked me into buying a bike and I didn't want to put money into a bike cause I don't bike cause I'm not on vacation. <laughs> and so I got some, I got a bike for like 150 bucks on Amazon mm-hmm. and, but you had to assemble it. <laughs> right. And you did a fun. good job. By taking it to the bike shop guy. <laughs> That's right. But it's a great bike. Your bike is great. It's fine. Yeah. It's not It's not as comfortable as like a Schwinn Cruiser, though. Is it not? It looks comfortable. It's not. But you could, or you could replace seat. the seat yeah. or put a pad on the seat. But it's, or even it's, just a pad cover, like a like a foam. Yeah. Maybe like a foam mattress Absolutely. cover. Put a hemorrhoid pillow on there. <laughs> <laughs> put a hemorrhoid donut. On I the... probably won't be using my travel pillow for a long time now. <laughs> You think I could like Velcro, Velcro it around? It looks, it's making me sad. <laughs> I think anyway. It's a good life hack. So we. It's a good life hack. We, we, I rode the, I rode my bike for a while. We didn't ride together that much. The idea was like, we could also ride in the neighborhood to different restaurants and bars and whatever. Um, and so we got all our equipment, helmets and locks and stuff. And then a couple of years ago, we just stopped using Our lives bikes. are a little crazy. That's that's what happened. Yes. Yeah, things are we chaotic just did, sometimes. We didn't like... I heard life is what happens when you're busy making plans. Other plans. What What other plans? I don't know. What were the but first plans? But that's the plans? lyric. Look, take it up with John Lennon <laughs> in heaven or maybe in I hell. I can't. <laughs> mm, he was complicated. I know, but he talks so much about not believing in God, like in that Imagine song. Really? There's no way God was he happy just said about imagine that. It. He just said Imagine There's it. There's no way. Come on. Are you, you saying God like he could okay be like that? in hell because he was kind of grouchy yes. and like he slept around and stuff? No, I think God was mad that he was putting that idea into people's heads. He Plus bigger than little, Jesus. He was just like a little grumpy. <sighs> hey, talk to God. I don't make the rules. <laughs> so. I don't know. I think, but like... I think like all didn't they ask like are you bigger than Jesus or something and like no they didn't ask are you bigger than Jesus <laughs> in that interview <laughs> listen <laughs> he volunteered that he was saying he was being like kind of tongue in cheek though no 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 he was making a good commentary about religion in the song or in an interview I'm talking about in the, the interview, interview. <laughs> okay di- di- I'm I've got the cans on dial it down <laughs> hey heavy hangs the head that wears the crown. <laughs> Ain't that the god in the truth. interview in the the height of Beatlemania? Yes, <laughs> I. By the way, I am obsessed with the Beatle anthology. Okay, I'm gonna keep okay. talking. Okay, <laughs> I figured you might. <laughs> if evidence based, <laughs> yeah, facts. If are... F passed his prologue, <laughs> so he in the interview he was making a commentary about the decline of uh, spirituality and religion Mm -hmm. and saying that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saying like, Hey, we did it. (laughs) Right. We finally pulled ahead of Jesus. People took him. He was being sort of, um, um, hyperbolic. He wasn't saying like, we're bigger than Jesus. He was saying like, it's crazy. Like we're bigger than Jesus. Well, then he had to come out and he had to do a retraction and explain it further. Right, like Trump was being sarcastic by saying, "Like, shoot, lights on your arm." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's we got to make a no Trump rule. <laughs> I just thought it was such a great comparison because it's almost like I understand. identical. I understand, but let's let's say for one hour a week. I don't. First of all, I don't even say his name. Like when I, I know. Well, you just did, didn't you? Well, I was making a joke. 
Okay. Just like what Trump said. <laughs> you said his name just now. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes, you did. I never said that. <laughs> oh my God. By the so, way, guys, this has been an emotionally challenging week. Yeah, this has been a tough week. This has been a tough this week. This has been hard. Let me it's finish been the, hard. Let me finish the story about the bikes. Oh, yeah. The bikes. <laughs> so the bike sat in the garage for a couple of years. Yeah. I, the place I'm scared of. I, I think like earlier this year. Yes. You said it like every year. Like we need to get the bikes out. We need to use the bikes. Yeah. And then earlier this year, I went in to take a look at them. Tires are flat. Pumped up the tires. However, we each had one flat tire. And, and that is not a uni- euphemism. <laughs> what would it be a euphemism for? I have one fat tire. Wait, flat tire? What's the thing around your waist? <laughs> spare tire. <laughs> I've got a spare tire. Okay. <laughs> so, neither one of us, we, we briefly talked about YouTube tutorials on how to repair bikes. Oh, yeah. That was my big suggestion. Yes. And I was then, like, we don't have to pay someone. And we then we both, knew, you, you. we both knew we weren't <laughs> going to do that. And so we, uh, so finally today, I, but I, I assumed like, well, bike shops are closed. And then our friend David Reese, and I was texting with him and he said, no, bike shops are open. Essential businesses. Essential guys. businesses. So we took, so today we, we had we did, this, like a curbside. We had this thing, this um, mount for the car. It's called a bike rack. A bike rack. Thank you. We have this bike rack that we has been sitting <laughs> outside. It took me 45 minutes to put it on the car. <laughs> but you did it. You got it on there. Yeah. It was like a, it was like a Mensa puzzle for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like laying it on its side, un, unraveling all the straps and mm. It was like a big octopus, and I was like, hmm, this and that. Anyway, this is so boring. We need to cut to another part of the story. Okay. When we went to McDonald's. (laughs) So we took the bikes today. I'm just thinking of all the threads that are dangling. Okay. (laughs) So we took the bikes to this bike shop. We thought we were going to leave them there overnight. The guy just fixed the tires <laughs> and that was it. And then. And we said like, oh, they don't need like a tune up or anything. And he's like, no, there's not a whole lot of miles on these. <laughs> he did kind of shame us. I don't think he intended to, but man, oh man, that was the result. It was like, yeah, we know we don't bike. It was. <laughs> we didn't no, but we didn't give him the satisfaction. We were like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah. That's right. We were like, we don't like to. We acted put, like we were proud of it. <laughs> we don't want to like stress them too much. Yeah. The bikes too much. So we just let them sit. We take care of our things. We let them sit around for That's five, why they have two five flat tires. And, and cobwebs in the spokes. <laughs> <laughs> we probably should have wiped off the cobwebs before we took them. It was like, anyway. So then afterwards, and it was hot today. And, and I, we had were to, both, I had to urinate in the bushes. <laughs> It's really happened. But you made it happen. I did make the it happen. The first two spots you proposed, <laughs> I was very surprised. <laughs> they were very out in the open. I don't know where you ended up. I, I went on a little private. Uh, <laughs> but I was really. A private mission. It was like a private. Because <laughs> like, you said you didn't have to go that badly. But, but then I the places did. you proposed were like someone who was dying of. <laughs> Urine poisoning. It was was like, I did have to kind of go badly. I just didn't want you to feel bad about it. And then then, then you were like, maybe there's somewhere behind the strip mall. And so, but the strip mall, what you didn't know is the strip mall like went on. Like there were buildings behind it. I found that out. It was like, like UPS trucks and stuff back there. And then (laughs) I was like, there was like a, there were some bushes along the side, and I was like, well, if I crouch in these bushes. Mm-hmm. That's what they're for. Oh, That's what bushes are for. Crouching genie hidden urine. <laughs> it was like, it was like, I was like, I got, but I was like, I'm just gonna, I had to go. So I did yeah. it. 
And I'm like crouching and my face is covered in a bandana and I'm like, oh, you know, whatever. And and <laughs> there was like a someone did drive by mm-hmm. and I just like bowed my head and closed my eyes as if somehow. <laughs> like if you couldn't see them, they couldn't see you. I needed like the emotional cover of like feeling like I wasn't doing what I was doing. Oh. And, uh, b- however, and I just kept like my, my internal dialogue was just like men pee outside all the time, mm-hmm. you know, it's like really this true. is what they do. Yeah. Is it true? I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> it is right. I don't, I, it's true. I don't know that it's, tr- I don't, I mean, like I'm trying to remember the last time I did that. And it's, you know, I've done it way more than you have. I feel you like may have. Like, like, you caught up to me. And you haven't it, laughed to me yet, but I think you've caught up to me. It was just, it happened. And then, it happened. And then I was like, you know, there's a McDonald's on the way home before you get to Bel Air. And I was like, I want some <laughs> French fries. This was the last McDonald's before <laughs> Bel Air. Yeah. And I was like, I haven't had French fries in the age of Corona yet. <laughs> Which is just a few months. <laughs> no, it's been 10 years. <laughs> It's been 10. You're saying the last 10 years is the age of Corona? Also, you've had fries in the last 10 years. I'm saying the age of Corona has, in. if you're talking like dog years or Corona years. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't privy to that, uh, that <laughs> scale. So we went so to. I was, like, I, want, I was like, should we get some McDonald's fries? Yeah. And then Paul was like, yeah. Well, we no, got. You said I could do whatever I because wanted. Because here's the thing. I was driving. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm your, I'm your captive when uh, you're driving. <laughs> I, I said, have to call you master. I said, say, yes, should master. We get some French fries. Whatever you wish, master. From McDonald's. And you said, whatever you wish, I master. I said, whatever you wish, master. So we pulled into the McDonald's and we saw a bunch of cars there. There was like already so the many cars. So then I had to download the app. You got the app so we could do like touchless transaction. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, we may as well just get... Yeah, if we're going to wait here. The whole meal. If we're going to wait here for a couple little bags of fries. <laughs> let's go all the way with this disgusting. Oh, and let's get a whole meal. I didn't say this to you out loud, but I am now. My, med- <laughs> my medium mm-hmm. felt like a small. It was Your medium not- fries? Yeah. Yeah. There was, like, there was no like overfilling. That was no, not a... That no. wasn't like... Even, you know... Even like the icon of the fries on the app were more fries. Than that. <laughs> we should have gotten one large fries and split it. Mm, I don't like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, master. No, what we should have done is gotten two large fries. <laughs> so we get, so we got the food. We got home. I Janie brought the food uh, in. I got a. I like undid the bikes. You and came I had out a sunburn. and said, "Can I just go ahead and eat?" I, <laughs> I was, was like, so yes. hungry, I couldn't wait. And you got a summer from your walk earlier today. So this has been. So now we Listen. we have the disgust of McDonald's in us. <laughs> <laughs> We're having our cocktails. I'm. You know what is helping my weekend water? There you go. Because it it takes the shame away. Mm-hmm. Take the shame away. Take the shame away. <laughs> What's that? That's from that song. What song? I don't remember. But you know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> Take the shame away. Take the shame away. What the fuck? <laughs> Were you in a cult? <laughs> what are you talking about? Take the pain away. It's take the pain away. Take the pain away. <laughs> you know what this you know this sounds to me like yeah, head on, apply directly to the forehead. <laughs> I'm like crying right now, like tears. <laughs> I have no and idea like, so, what you're talking about. I don't know. Take the pain away. Take the Take pain, pain away. away. Is it like NXS or something? It's like, a, it's like, um, oh, it's like an 80s emo situation or something. Somebody out there is going to know and they're going to be like, actually, no that's doubt. from the 1980s. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not going to be taken. I just like, we need to ask somebody on the, we need to ask Google or computer. (laughs) You woke it up. (laughs) 
Oh my god. But there were other reasons why this week was it, it, well, I mean there's all kinds of reasons. Yeah. why this week was challenging, but like like I don't know, everyone sort of stuck with their emotional life right now. Mm-hmm. And there is and like very little change of scenery and you know, there's the you know, there it's it's a, there's a lot of anxiety going on and I feel like for the most part we've been doing pretty well but this week definitely felt like I really felt it this week. Yeah, I was like know? I was like I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> I was like this isn't this isn't sustainable. Like I can't <laughs> Well, you know well, what? Well, it's not I mean, sustainable. It's not sustainable. And we are going to, uh, because we're probably going to be stuck in here like this for at least another month, you know? Right. Because they're, they're we're trying in to a, figure out, we're, we're in, in California, a different they're trying to figure out ways area. to reopen, dis- select things. But then it's also, it gets into how much do you trust that and blah, blah, blah. But much like they're trying to figure that out, we have to figure out things that we can do. So we don't go mad, right? Well, I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna sell my pilot to yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, you've been working on a script. Yeah, and it's so good. Yes, but yes, it is. Here's what's gonna happen. You don't even read it yet. I haven't read it yet, but the idea is so. Well, great. the idea is good, but yeah. like, uh, I know a lot about it. There are people in it, so it's not just one person. There are people in it, so they're gonna have to be together on the set. <laughs> See, honey, you fucked up. Should have written a one-person TV show. I know, right? (laughs) I should have. Can I tell you, this is a thing that you don't know about, but on the topic of (laughs) this being an emotionally challenging week. Uh Uh-huh. I think this was yesterday. Who can say? (laughs) I think this happened yesterday, though. I'm listening. As you know, I've been playing Animal Crossing. I sure do. I've turned a corner with the game. People who play the game will understand. The famous musician K.K. Slider has visited my island. Oh, my god! This has opened things Like, up. for real? In the game. Like, for real, though? Like, he's sitting at home and, like... Oh, Paul's no, he's, island. No, he's made up in the game. Oh, he's not a real... No. Oh, see, I was pretending like I knew who that musician was because I was like, I don't know a lot of pop culture musicians. <laughs> So I was like, oh, yeah, K.K. Slider. K.K. Slider is a character in the game. Got it. And from the, like, as you play, because the game happens in a sort of real time where days pass the same as they do here. Oh, my God. So the time it is. Kill me now. The time it is when you're playing is the time it is on the island of your game. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, it it is. And it, it adds a level of anticipation to it because there's little stores on the island and so and they only open at certain times a day they only open certain times a day and they have different things in them every day <laughs> so you wake cute. up and you're like i'm gonna check out the shops in my island <laughs> and other people's islands so this whole time you've not been in quarantine <laughs> in a way it's true you've been out shopping and stuff i've been doing a- honey i hadn't even thought of it that way i'm sitting around i've been buying clothes I've been planting a garden. I've, I've been, been doing I've been doing so many things in this game that I should be doing in real life. <laughs> I've been sitting growing my own food. <laughs> staring into space. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. No, you that's not true. Okay. Anyway, so KK Slider K. K. is this Slider. little dog <laughs> who plays the guitar. And so the people who run the islands, they're they start at a certain point they start saying to you like, Hey look. If we boost our island's profile, <laughs> we can get the famous musician K.K. Slider to do a concert here. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's true. Stop. It's true. So you have to get I... people to move to your island. You have to decorate the shit out of it. Do you, you even know stuff. what kind of music K.K. Slider does? Yes, I do. Well, now because... you do, but... No. Because before, they play he get... it. before he gets there, you can buy his music in the shops. <laughs> Wait, and you're not spending like real money. No, there's okay, no right. actual money. Okay, okay, no, no, no. Just a second. No, what Just you do is you have to you yeah. have to like fucking fish like a monster. <laughs> you have to be fishing all day long, selling the fish to make money. Uh huh. Uh huh. So that's what I've been right, doing. Right, the capitalism thing. Exactly. 
So once KK Slider finally does come to your island, what is great <laughs> is because it the game happens day by day. There's one day where Tom Nook, who's the proprietor of the island, mm-hmm. uh-oh, cuckoo. He says, great news. You see it happen right in front of you. He calls KK Slider on the phone. So he's like the Richard Branson. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Sure. (laughs) Or like the fire festival guy. (laughs) He calls up. You watch him have a phone conversation with KK Slider. Oh, my God. He says, great news. KK Slider is coming to the island. He's Uh going to do a concert here. This is great. So then I play the game. I, I quit. For the day. Uh-huh. Next morning, it starts with the concert, which is <laughs> which is very weird because it's daytime, but the concert is this little dog playing a guitar, and you and the other characters that live on your island all crowded around him in a semicircle <laughs> in darkness, lit by whatever light from beneath. Okay. And then he plays a song, which is the music that plays through all of Animal Crossing that you cannot turn off, (laughs) except this time with fake words. Right. Oh, my God. And then credits roll. This is the beginning of the day. (laughs) Why do credits roll? If you're... Because that's that's the, quote, end of the game. Wait, you're at the end of the game? That's the... That's the... As far as the story of the game goes, yes. Oh, wait. So the whole story is just to get K.K. Slider to play your personal living room concert or whatever? Or in this black void. That's it. And then after that, it is, is just you know what? it this, is just adding to your island. This is bleak. Why is it bleak? It's bleak. Because it's a commentary on American life. Mm-hmm. Okay? On the emptiness of consumerism? Yes. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm pretty happy we were able to charge a new washer dryer set this week. Yes, so. thank God for that. <laughs> Um, that so, didn't feel that empty to me. Now here's the thing: the whole reason I brought up Animal Crossing is <laughs> to say that you had a good day. No, oh. <laughs> yeah, just to brag. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to say, look, all is not lost. I had a great day on Animal Crossing. Wait, can I guess what you're gonna yeah, say? Yeah, take a guess. It bummed you out that you finished the game. No. Okay. Before I finished the game, yeah, the other day, it was morning, and I started playing, and I did what is called, I opened my gates, which is, you have a little airport on your island, and you go to this bird, and you say, hey, I want visitors, open the gates, and then anyone that is your friend can come visit you on your island. So okay. it's like people I know. Okay. So I opened the gates. And then, like, four or five people came all at the same time. So they were all playing it at the same time. Yeah, and they're, like, running around and stuff like that on my island. Because it'll tell you who's online. How are they at the gates of your island at the exact same moment you're opening your gate? They are not there at the exact same moment. They have to fly to my island from their island. They have to go to their little airport, their little airport <laughs> and fly there. And you get a heads up like, hey, you know, here comes Lauren Lapkus is coming. <laughs> <laughs> did she come to your island? She did not on this occasion. She yeah. has, We've been to each other's islands. Look, we're friends. <laughs> but the thing is, I opened my gates and then I announced to everybody, hey, my gates are open if you want to come to my island and visit. Oh. And so uh, like five people did. Immediately after that, you came in. Because you were having an emotional oh. thing that you wanted to talk I, about. I fucking shat all over your... No, no, no. It's not that. <laughs> oh. It was... I was invested in what you were saying. And so I had to put the game down knowing that <laughs> these five people are just running around. <laughs> running around. You were hosting a party. I'm not interacting with them at all. <laughs> yeah. I'm just... My, my little guy is just literally sitting on a chair. <laughs> oh, my God. But every morning, and it was so. It was like one of those things where I was totally invested in what you were saying, but at the same time, way in the back of my head, it was funny to me. Oh my god! 
well, that this was also happening. I have to say, I've like bombarded you with so many emotional problems. That this is week. not that. No, you're yes, not bombarded. You have not bombarded me. I'll be like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened, and da 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 da, da and what do people think? And if I say this, and blah, no. Blah, blah. It but that's what but that's the arrangement honey it's like we talk to each other about this stuff you're not bombarding me. i know but like at some point you can't be like the neediest person on planet earth you're not the neat <laughs> <laughs> that's not how i would characterize it but here's the thing and then it's like oh wait a minute i'm like sucking up everything right now and i'm like how come you aren't like dumping on me today like i need you to dump on me well this is what i was gonna say here's the thing is that we're we're in different places at different times and this is a that's when things are normal and things are not normal right now no they're not and so it's like we just gotta roll with it as best we can i mean what is normal (laughs) you just blew my mind (laughs) wait is that who is that (laughs) <laughs> I don't think that's anybody in particular. Wait. You get what do you, you pay for? I have the best idea. I have the best idea. So, okay. So, okay. You guys. Okay. So, the show is you go around America and you're like going into people's houses and you're like, you get what you pay for. And is then- that the first thing I say? <laughs> And they're like, it like Publishers Clearinghouse where they, I ring the doorbell, <laughs> they come to the door and I say, you get what you pay for. No, it's like prearranged. It's not going to be like, surprise, <laughs> Paul's doing a show with you. Like Publishers Clearinghouse isn't. Come on, honey, grow up. <laughs> I mean, everything is. Anytime you see fake. someone, I mean, Look, it is. we know because we're from Fakesville. Yeah, like how's everyone mic'd? It's all fake. How's everyone mic'd all the time? <laughs> okay, and then you're like, oh, you get what do you pay for? And then they're like, oh my <laughs> God, I bought this. And it'll be like Antiques Roadshow, only like modern stuff or whatever. And then, and you tell him, yeah, it's not worth anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, it's not worth anything. <laughs> and, you're like, and they're like, yeah, I spent all this money on this on this uh, card table and look, the leg is calling, coming off and you're like, you get what you pay for. It. And then you're like, good news. We're going to get you a top of the line card table. And then like the sponsors of the show, like set him up with a nice card table. And then like, he gets to have like nice card. but this is the best idea. This is the best idea. The best part of the show in the interstitials uh-huh. you play. There's like little comedy sketches where you're different characters. <laughs> I, I don't want to. You see what I'm saying? I don't. I'm in not, between, like in a studio. I'm not shooting this down, but it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> um, Only the traveling around America part, but the bits, the in, the the studio. That's all bits, shot here. In LA. We're all shot here in Glendale. I'm going to rent a studio. Sure. It's going to be. Let easy. me ask you this. That's going to be easy. Let me ask you this: <laughs> Are the stakes always as low as a new card table? <laughs> yes. There are anything you want them to be. Do you want them to be like I paid for my daughter's wedding and look at this ah! <laughs> lousy. Ah! Ah, I would, la- I would love guy. the opportunity to judge someone's wedding after no, the fact and say that it like sucked. Son-in-law I got from this shit. Wait, I pay, it- spent like $80,000 on this guy as a fucking louse. There is a show though, right? Where people judge each other's weddings. I'm not talking about judging the wedding. I'm saying no, you I'm get talking what about you pay for. You get what you pay I know, for. I'm, but I'm talking about that now. Is there, isn't there? there a show where somebody ju- where people judge weddings? It's like four people are planning their weddings. I don't remember like somebody or I thought I it was like, like some somebody... people had to like plan someone else's wedding or something or mm. I don't know. All I know is when we got married 10 years. Future wife swap. <laughs> <laughs> you get what, what you pay for. for. <laughs> I really like the character bits sketches in between. I think that's really going to set you apart like hosting reality show wise. I dare say I, I think the subject matter of the show is is different there's a show where people watch tv and we stare at them so like don't judge no, we, my they're content all watching silently well you're not gonna be <laughs> do you, silent do you think like they're watching tv like they're not look this show is gonna heal us because like everyone has like bought a lemon something mm-hmm. and so like that's gonna we're all gonna relate to it and then you're going to be in a like, you know what? This couch is a piece of shit from Crate and Barrel. There is a spring broken in the middle. And I am sorry that you had to like be on computerized hold for t- whatever. Do you remember that discount? 
C- CB2, was it? That futon thing we got? The thing was, there wasn't anything wrong with it. It just was uncomfortable. <laughs> that... <laughs> Like the, As a piece a, of furniture you sit on, the only thing wrong with it was it was uncomfortable. But my point was, I think it was, they didn't... No, it wasn't defective. It just sucked. They didn't hide it from us. You <laughs> no, know what I'm saying? That's true. Like, I fully was like, oh, modern. It's modern and hard. I mean, they, they hid it from us in the way that it was a bold-faced a bald face lie. Like, that this is a good thing you should have in your home. I think I even was like on apartment therapy and like, you have a small space. Here's what you need. This futon that was the made, very act of made selling of it petrified was wood or a, whatever. A, a deceit. Anyway, that was a nightmare. Listen, I feel like the common theme is I get suckered into buying things that don't work out. That's what the theme of this episode is. And I don't know what to say about it other than because you also had that car. <laughs> You had that Ford. But that, I did, I did, I did get, I didn't get what I paid for because I got money back for that lemon. That's right. That's right. I got money in class action You were involved in a lemon lawsuit. (laughs) It was kind of exciting. It it wasn't like it covered the whole cost of the thing. It was just like, you're not really out as much as you, you didn't feel it as bad. (laughs) (laughs) I felt bad. And you're not alone. I felt bad because I took it to CarMax and they, they took it off my hands. (laughs) And, um, I mean, I'm, you know, I basic, I, then I sold Carmax a lemon, but then I didn't get the lemon settlement until later. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Carmax got some lemon settlement money too. Who knows? You know what they should have, because they should not have bought that Ford, the Ford Fiesta from me or whatever. Yeah. That was like a nice. Was it a Fiesta? Is that what it was? Yeah. It was, yeah. I was like, I, guys, I always try to be frugal and it's a nightmare and then I end up spending more money than, than, than necessary <laughs> we called it the blue banana and i don't know why i can't remember why i called it the blue banana but it was a blue banana and it, was it really was like the... a blue b- lemon right. <laughs> oh, man, it was like whatever anyway anyway we're still alive <laughs> <laughs> that car did not kill us anyway anyway it's like whatever i don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be such a fun show i don't like the travel part for you as an EP on it, though, I guess I'm going with you <laughs> to these places, so uh-huh. it won't be as bad. Yeah. I guess. What if we all do them in one place? Like, we don't have to literally Well, like, we do, like, one whole season in Hawaii, or we do one whole season. Well, there were two whole seasons in Hawaii. <laughs> the show takes place in Hawaii. Yeah. We find out what the, the Hawaii is, some, <laughs> some place where people buy a lot of junk. Five seasons in a movie in Hawaii. A movie? <laughs> <laughs> what? Can you imagine if there was like an antiques road no, show? No, because movie? here's the thing. Well, but yours is so much better because you're going to have those interstitial sketches, sketches that we right. shoot and you're going to play a different character every time. That's right. Like there's going to be like a movie that like comes out of those characters. <laughs> this is a, I got to say, honey, this is a bold vision. I think it's so easy and it's like cheap to do and it's like people are going to love the show. <laughs> Wait till I roast that card table, man. <laughs> Listen, a card table is like a bad... It could be anything. <laughs> it could be like, I collect vintage appliances and I got this like, you know, this but stove. But how do I know? What do, I, do I have to have knowledge of this stuff? All you have to do, okay, <laughs> is show the fuck up. <laughs> I don't like how... This is how you are as a producer? <laughs> I am like, you know you what? You can't talk to me this way in front of the crew. Because oh. they'll lose respect for me. <laughs> Okay, okay. You go to your trailer, honey. I'm going to send a PA in w- with some lemon tea. <laughs> lemon tea. <laughs> just show up. You're going to you just turn it on. You got to mm. turn on the charm. The once the cameras are rolling, I want to see the charm. You got to All you have to do is draw them out. Right. That's it. Right. Oh, where would you find this? Do you love vintage furniture? You know, like you know, it's just going to be <laughs> Maybe you should be the host <laughs> no. and I should be the producer. No. No. I mean, that right there, that that drew me in. It drew me in and drew me out. I will be, I will be an occasional foil in some of your comedy sketches. Oh, here, now we come to it. Uh-huh. So you get the EP I'll credit. Be a stra- I can do straight man. You get the EP credit. I'm pretty good at straight man. And then you just show up in every third sketch where I have to do new characters every single time. Oh, I'm sorry. The EP credit of coming up with an entire series of television. 
Yeah, okay. I'll just get the movie. (laughs) I'm just gonna get the E B credit (laughs) or whatever. All right. I feel like What? It's time to wind down. Um, What's the matter? And now I want you to sing Danny (laughs) Boy. Right now? (laughs) Yeah, kinda. No. Guys, okay, can I tell the can I tell the world? I I don't know what you're gonna tell people. (laughs) (laughs) You do this to me a lot. How do you not know what I'm going to tell people? Is it okay if I tell them? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what. Tell me first. I literally just referenced Danny Boy, and then I asked if I can tell the world. You don't know what I'm going to tell the world. About my show that I don't do anymore? Yeah, but the Danny Boy part. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, you can tell them. Why do you have to ask me about that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be on uh, You Get What You Pay For. I sing Danny Boy at the You end? know why? Because Danny Boy's free and you get what you pay for. <laughs> I used to do this variety show for many, many years, off and on in Los Angeles. Can I, I just interject really quick? <laughs> <laughs> sure. It was like not just a variety show. It was the show. It was the show. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I hope everyone heard that and took note. It was like fucking magic. It was a very fun show. It was a lot of it was a lot of work, and so I periodically would take breaks from it. <laughs> but I would close the show by singing "Danny Boy," and I would just riff on the, just riff on whatever. Okay, but that sounds like like <laughs> sing Danny Wayne riff. It was like this. No, I mo- think I sounded like that. It was like this monumental mm. moment in the show. Okay. Where Eben Schletter would play piano, he started Danny Boy, and then Paul would come out and he would start like monologizing um, to the Danny Boy thing. But it was always like woven into somehow like the theme of the show and it would go on for like 15 minutes sometimes. sometimes it's like yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, like you just went on this roller coaster. It was like kind of like the most awesome part of the show. Mm-hmm. Like the Danny Boy. A lot of people said that. Yeah, it was fun. It was unique, and it was... Um, well, when you say a lot of people said that, like, when you were doing it, like, could you feel like this is such a, like, spontaneous moment? Like, it's so... it's so. Yeah, I think that I think that, <laughs> that was a, a definite moment of connection with the audience that everyone knew that it was all improvised and spontaneous and happening right in front of them, and, um, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I, I, you know, that I... Like, doing that with Eben... Schletter playing piano was so I loved it. I always loved it. I always loved it. Um It was like so special. Like every time you did that show. Oh, honey. No, it was I think your variety show is probably like the most you thing that you've ever done. Probably, yeah. Like it's the most like if you're going to put com- like Paul's comedy in a in a in a in a, in a category like that is the thing where you could like show like every angle of who you are comedically. Hmm. Because like it was like this rotating You mean the show itself. The show yeah. itself and it because it had every little element. It was all the things that I like to do. It was all the things that you like to do. Now I'm getting embarrassed that we're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because I said you had to close the podcast by singing Danny yes, Boy. Yes, which I'm not going to do, by the way. But I think there might you might be able to find it online because I did for real? it. I did it as an extra for um, laboring under delusions, which I shot for a comedy uh, special that I shot for Comedy Central. And so after the, I did an hour of stand up, and then for the live audience, I did Danny Boy with Eben, and it went on the DVD, and I. I seem to remember it being available online. Yeah, but I mean, like, when you say online, you just mean that version. You don't mean, like, all of those versions no, at just Largo. That version. But, yeah. like, do you have those versions from Largo I somewhere? I have some. I have some. I don't know if they'd hold up. Yeah, they would. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It would be fun to see. That's what we should break out. I don't week. think I have them. I don't know what I have on video. I have probably more. I, I, who cares? <laughs> anyway, anyway, we should wind this up. Any recommendations? Well, I just started a new podcast today that I'm really liking. It's called, um, I just told you the name of it, and now I can't remember the name of it. Oh, it's a movie podcast. It's about Peter Bogdanovich. The first season is about oh, Peter I know Bogdanovich. What it's called. I know what it's called. 
the plot thickens. The plot thickens. There we go. Okay, so Ben Minkowitz hosts it. Who I'm a big fan of Josh Minkowitz on from Dateline. I follow him on on Twitter, and he like is so amusing to me because he's always like he has like kind of a dry sense of humor online. Um, anyway. I want to be his friend, but I don't know. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Ben Manguins hosts it. It's called The Plot Thickens. The first season is about Peter Bogdanovich, and so far the first two episodes are really, really good. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm also weirdly reading. I don't know if this is a recommendation. No, I'll save that for later. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. We started watching Mrs. America on Hulu. I think we mentioned that last week. Oh, we did? Yeah. What day is it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, it's Friday. That we always know that we do this on Friday, so that's one. That's our that's north our star. That's our only day yeah. that we know what day it Let's is. Let's remember. Um, I want to recommend a podcast called "You're the Man Now, Dog," which is an improv podcast. Uh, Ryan Rosenberg and Dan Lippert, who are two really funny guys, they occasionally have guests, but um, uh, a lot of times just the two of them. Do you know them? Yes, I do. They're really funny. They're part of a group called Big Grande, which Drew Tarver is also in. Oh, okay. And a guy named John Mackey. And they have a podcast called The Teacher's Lounge, all four of them together. Mm-hmm. But You're the Man Now, Dog, is just these two guys with the occasional guests. And it's really funny. And, um, you know, they're, they're friends. And I like hearing them uh, relate to each other and chat as well as, you know, be hilarious improvisers. That's cool. So, yeah, that's my that's my recommendation for... This week, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I should tell people a special event that I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I am doing Plug your event. a play online. We're going to be doing this live online. Um, it's going to be me and Ray Seahorn from Better Call Saul. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's written by uh, Bill Corbett of Mystery Science Theater fame. And I want to get his co-author... Come on, man. Ah, Paul, why weren't you prepared before now? <laughs> ah, Maybe because we're drunk. Idiot. Do you think we're drunk? I'm not drunk. <laughs> I'm going to be. I, I'm not either. Here we go. Yes. It's written by Bill Corbett and Kira Obolensky. It is called Hate Mail, and it's a parody of Love Letters, which is the famous sit down show that married actors or associated actors love to do well my friend did you know you know my well let me explain the play the love letters is two people uh writing love letters to each other it's like a.r gurney or something it's like what a.r gurney who wrote it Oh, who cares (laughs) (laughs) Uh, by, by now public domain wrote it um and so two people sit on opposite sides of the stage at little tables and they pretend they're writing these letters to each other. And so Bill and Kira wrote this one called hate mail, um, which is sort of the opposite of that. That's clever. Yeah. And so it's me and Ray Seahorn. Um, and we're going to be doing it, uh, 9 PM Eastern, 6 PM Pacific on Saturday, May 9th. And okay. it's a benefit for, uh, partners in health. So there you go. So wait, did you say nine? P- wait, it's 6 PM Pacific, 9 PM Eastern, 6 PM Pacific. That's right. Okay. So if you're overseas, you might want to catch it like another time. Check out Greenwich Mean Time. I wish I could do the... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to stay up there. I don't know. Because um, I know we've done the Thrilling Adventure Hour benefits where you can... They they will be archived and you can pay to watch the archive. Uh-huh. And those are also for charity as well. So I think this will probably be the same deal. But there you go. Saturday, May 9th. I'll have the uh, ticket link up on my website, paulftompkins.com slash live. So my friend, one of my friends from drama school, Erin Anderson Gardner, her parents are actors and she grew up in the in the um, Twin Cities and her parents did a run of love letters at the, I want to say it's called like the Chan Hassett Dinner Theater. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She told me some funny stories about that place actually. And um. They did it for I want to say I'm gonna I'm making this up now, but it it's not totally off the mark, like 28 years, yeah, or something. That's wild. Yeah, like they like they that's how they made their living as actors, like yeah. as equity actors under this contract for decades. Yeah, and, and the beauty of this yeah. play is that you don't have to memorize anything, and yet there's no way they didn't end up knowing that play by heart. Oh, for sure. 
For sure. Then they had to pretend that they were... They're like that it was new. Yes. Yeah. That, they're re- that they had to pretend that they're reading and writing. But like, that's cool, huh? Yeah, absolutely. They're like, my, my friend, like she grew up in like an actor family and yeah, yeah, yeah. her brother's like a musician and... And um and now she does um she she knows American Sign Language her mm-hmm. and her husband and they do they sign uh, theater shows there yeah which is fantastic yeah it's pretty cool so she that's my little guys. guys that's my little name drop story regarding love letters by A R Gurney maybe <laughs> maybe A R Gurney if you're listening. If you're this, Tell us that you wrote love letters. <laughs> Aaron and if you want to get in on this, you get what you pay for action. Oh, God. Yeah, we're looking for investors. <laughs> we're not doing a Kickstarter. Send us cash money in the mail. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening. Be safe. Be safe. Be sane. Be sane and be... Be salient. What did we... Last week, we closed it perfectly. Oh, stay we, Stay okay. safe. Stay sane, stay inside. Oh my God. We're so good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, bye.